For people like Glynis Price, that makes living in the country that much better. She now also enjoys cooling in her home, which has been an extra bonus this summer. If your home has a water well, then don't wait to add a well connect to your home. Call 989-356-2113 or visit wellconnectsaves.com for more information. Rebates are available in most areas. Folks, keeping the barbarians in the gate. I got into the labor movement not because I, I wanted to, to negotiate wages. I got into the labor movement because I saw it as a vehicle to do massive social change to include the lots of people. Let's take these son of a b- out and give America back to America where we belong. Thank you very much. Thank you. As far as I'm concerned, the Tea Party can go straight to hell. Hey, welcome into the show, everybody. I'm Trucker Randy. You're listening to your Defending Fathers here on the Patriot Voice Radio Network. We appreciate you being part of the show today. If you have a text message you want to send in as a comment, 231-360-5140. Please like our Facebook page if you haven't done so yet. Shame on you. Facebook.com forward slash your Defending Fathers. We post all the articles and stories we talk about on our Facebook page. That automatically gets put on our website, patriotvoice.net forward slash your defending fathers. We have a link there at the top that says podcasts. You can click on that and actually grab MP3 audio file links to listen to the show, anything that you missed. Want to talk about a story from up here in northern Michigan that I want to bring to your attention today because I cannot believe the assault on a person's God-given rights of the Second Amendment, the rights to bear arms, absolutely put into our United States Constitution, ratified in the Bill of Rights, December 15th, 1791, you have a permit to carry a firearm on your body without any permit or license from any governmental agency. It is your God-given right to bear arms in the United States of America. Now, since then, certain states... Our federal government, our state governments have tried to infringe upon that God-given right and force you to do certain things in order to justify the right to carry a firearm. It has creeped into our state government here in the state of Michigan into a bureaucratic department that has forced a lawsuit to be filed. I'm going to break this down for you very slowly. I have a video clip that I'm going to be playing that was at the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, a public hearing, talking about a bill that has to go forward because of what's been happening to citizens here in the state of Michigan. One of them is Bill Johnson. He's an elderly man. He's a veteran. He served our country in the military. He is the founder of the Antonagin Tea Party up in the UP. You don't know where it is? Look it up on a map. He carries a gun, usually all the time, with him on his person. He open carries at all his Tea Party events. You want to go to a real tea party? Go to one of his. Elderly man, married, 
proud veteran, proud American. Knows his Second Amendment rights. He's been trained in firearms. He's defended our country. He knows how to shoot a gun. He knows how dangerous they are if you're not careful with them. Well, unfortunately, because of the drug epidemic problems in this state, his own daughter has a drug problem. And she also has a child. Nice young man. I believe he's 9 or 10 years old. I forget exactly how old he is. But she's got a drug problem. And she's abandoned him a couple of times. And being the loving, good grandparents they are, they went and got the boy and took him into their home and took care of him while she was going through her problems with drugs. This has happened a couple of times in their lives. And I'm going to tell you more about this story. I'm going to tell you more about what's going on. You will not believe your ears. I'm Trucker Randy. We'll be right back. Are smart meters really a smart idea? They are for the power companies. Drain the Swamp Michigan here again. We want you to know just what the power companies are up to with the blessing of our state government. Smart meters are digital electric usage meters being installed across the country by companies like DTE and Consumer Power without the consent or notification of their customers. They produce RF signals to communicate with the smart electric grid so the power companies can monitor our power usage and then sell that data to third-party companies. They can also explore or catch fire and the health effects of the microwave radiation used by these to communicate with the power grid is in serious question. Consumers have no say in the mandatory switch to the digital meters but that can change. Call your state rep and senator and tell them they must support House Bill 4220 which restores the absolute right to refuse smart meter installation at no cost or penalty for doing so. This message brought to you and paid for by Train the Swamp Michigan. Find us on Facebook or on the web at DTSMI.org and donate to keep us on the air. For all you folks out there that own firearms, are looking to buy a new or used gun, or fix up that old piece at a good price, there's Curtis Gunsmithing. Not too far off the beaten path at 9996 Picker Lake Road in Petoskey, Mr. Tom Curtis is an AGI certified gunsmith and firearm connoisseur. Don't send your gun out or travel far away for your specialized gun work. You have a friend in your own backyard. Call Curtis Gunsmithing today, 231-347-3487. Another important message from Drain the Swamp, Michigan. Senate Majority Leader Arlen Meekoff has booted gubernatorial candidate Senator Patrick Kolbeck off all his Senate committee assignments. This comes after Senator Kolbeck violated an unwritten rule of Michigan GOP politics to inform other elected officials when campaigning within their districts. This came after Senator Kolbeck attended a Right to Life dinner in Holland, Michigan, to which he was invited. According to a letter to Kolbeck from Meekoff's office, no reason for the action was given. It's no surprise to Drain the Swamp, Michigan, a candidate for governor other than the Attorney General, might be singled out for political punishments. It is pure Michigan politics. A principled conservative voice in Michigan must be silenced. In reality, Senator Meekoff's actions have brought the Colbeck campaign to the headlines of the media, providing publicity campaign money cannot buy. Drain the Swamp Michigan thanks Arlen Meekoff for demonstrating the political treachery practice with regularity in Lansing, a perfect example of why we need to drain the swamp. This message brought to you and paid for by Drain the Swamp Michigan. Truth, justice, and the American way. Coffee's weird with me. I don't need it. If I don't drink it, I don't go like, oh, God, i got to get coffee. And if I drink coffee, it's midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't keep me up. I go right to bed. I don't know if I can drink six cups and go right to sleep, but it's never kept me awake. It very rarely wakes me up if I'm on some type of an extended road trip. And when I am, I never want to stop driving. I'm the guy that will drive for nine hours and then say, I can do a tenth or an eleventh. It's the one and only They Road X. Weekdays, 3 p.m. to 6. Welcome back to the show, everybody, talking about a story here that you're not going to believe. 
I've got video clip pulled up to play for you talking about a veteran of the United States military, a senior citizen, Bill Johnson, up in Ontonagon in the UP, founder of the Ontonagon Tea Party, a patriot, somebody who believes in our Constitution, loves America, loves his rights, knows his rights, and has a family, like a lot of us, where there's some dysfunction. There's a problem. And that problem is his daughter that he loves has a drug problem. And she also has a young boy, son, a child. And I'm not sharing personal stories about this family without their permission. This is public record. They've posted it on their Facebook page. They've told their story. And you're going to hear it in this testimony that took place a week ago yesterday, October the 17th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I fast forward the video to the roughly the 24-minute mark. You're going to hear from Tom Lambert. He's the president of Michigan Open Carry. And they're talking about a bill a specific law that Senator Tom Casperson from the UP has introduced into the Senate. And they're talking about and taking public comments on this bill to see if it needs to be changed or amended. But Tom Lambert talks about the situation that the Johnson family experienced. In the middle of winter, it was very cold out. His daughter having another drug episode, abandon her son. And being the good grandfather he is, he went and got the boy and brought him back to his house. Fed him, clothed him, and took him to school. Picked him up after school, brought him home, made him sit down and do his homework. Give him a great meal. Talked with the boy. Got him to bed. Got him back up for school again. This is what grandparents do. You don't want this on anybody that you know. But going through this a few times, this is not just a one-time incident. It's happened time and time again. She goes on these binges and then she sobers up. Or drugs up, she's fine, she comes back, she wants her son back, she takes him back, they let her do it. And weeks, months later, it happens again. So finally, Bill and his wife decided, you know what, we need to either adopt the boy legally or at least become his foster parents. So that we have some kind of rights to protect this boy from his own mother. This is painful. This breaks my heart, but it's happening here in the state of Michigan. Well, in the process of filing the paperwork to become foster care parents for their own blood grandson that they're forced to do, they start dealing with this bureaucratic department known as Child Protective Services. A bureaucratic department formed under the executive branch of Governor Rick Snyder. These people have been working in this department probably for years, going all the way back to Jennifer Granholm or John Engler or, or Blanchard. How, who knows how long these people have been in there? But they're not elected by the people. They're bureaucratic hires, appointees that hire people. And these social workers have some forms that need to be filled out. And one of the questions that they ask, and I don't know if it's on the written form or whether it's done verbally during an interview process to determine whether or not people are good potential foster care people, they asked Bill Johnson if he owned any firearms. Are you kidding me? Bill Johnson? <laughs> This guy open carries at his tea party meetings. He's got a gun safe in his house. 
Bill Johnson probably owns three, four, five different deer rifles, shotguns. I mean, I don't know, but I got, I know Bill Johnson and I know the man owns firearms. Really? You're going to ask him that question? So being an honest person, he responded, yes. You do? Well, yeah. Doesn't everybody? Well, no, I don't. Okay, well, I do. Well, how many guns do you own? Where do you keep them? Are they loaded? Or are they unloaded and stored in a safe somewhere? We're, we're not going to give you permission to take care of your own grandson with your daughter having drug problems and abandoning the boy in 20 below zero weather. We're not going to give you permission to take care of that boy if you have guns in your home. Bill never saw it coming, folks. He did not know that he should have lied to those people and said, no, I don't own any firearms. As soon as you're asked that question by any bureaucrat, a doctor, anybody, you flat out lie to their face. And I know as a Christian that's the wrong thing to do, but guess what? We are forced to deal with this society that wants to take the guns. If he wanted custody of his grandson and wanted to have some legal rights as a foster parent, he should have lied to him, but he didn't. Being an honest, good Christian man, he told him the truth. And you will not believe what happened next. They demanded to do a home visit. They demanded to see his home and to see where he kept these guns. So, knowing Bill, knowing that he was going to be inspected, he probably went through all of his guns, unloaded them, put trigger locks on them, stowed them in his gun safe, and had the ammunition far away, nowhere in sight. I don't know. I wasn't there. But that's what I'm assuming happened. And it got to the point during this process, folks, they were not going to approve his application to be a foster care parent for his own grandson. His blood, his family. Because they couldn't trust him to not load one of those guns and carry him in his presence with his grandchild. They were basically telling him that he could not have a loaded gun anywhere near the boy. And because they couldn't trust him to do that, they were going to deny his application to be foster care parent to his grandson. Well, during this hearing, I'm going to start it off right now with a little bit of it. We'll break it during the break. This is Tom Lambert. He's the president of the Michigan Open Carry Group. And this is him testifying a week ago yesterday at the Michigan Senate Judiciary Committee chaired by Senator Rick Jones. And I'm going to play for you a part of it and try to pause it to give you my opinions and my thoughts on it as he goes through this testimony. Tom Lambert, Michigan Open Carry. Members of the committee, my name is Tom Lambert. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much for the opportunity again here today. I'm very happy to report that our previous opposition to the bill has since been removed, and we do now support the bill moving forward. Uh, Senator Casperson and his office has done a fantastic job of working on this bill, and we would like to extend a huge thank you to them. However, there, there's more that I think the committee needs to hear. Uh, this legislation is good stuff, and it needs to move forward, and I hope you do move it forward quickly, but I've had the opportunity since the last committee hearing and this committee hearing to speak with some of the people involved with the litigation that spurred this legislation. And unfortunately, I no longer believe that this legislation is enough to truly fix the issue. I think it's a little more than a Band-Aid to address a lot of the symptoms. Good. Move it forward, please. But hear me out. I think what's going on is effectively a bait and switch by the department. You're hearing one thing from hearing committee. The people out in the field 
are saying something completely different. And then the Attorney General's office says a third thing in their brief against this lawsuit. It seems there's no accountability at any level here to get the truth of the matter. We've been debating this legislation in the context of whether or not a foster parent can carry a firearm for their own defense inside their home. I've known this issue has gone on for a long time, years and years and years. I've known that there's been an issue with this department for years and years and years. The problem is every time we find somebody with this problem, we say, let's help you out. Let's stand up to them. They never want to fight back because they know if they do anything to fight back, their kids will be taken from them. And that's what happened in this instance. And what's going on here, this isn't a matter of whether or not you can carry in your own home. This isn't a matter of whether or not you have to store your firearms in your home. Let's take this specific example of this lawsuit. The gentleman in question wasn't given the opportunity to store his firearms. He was told multiple times, and I quote, you have to get rid of all of your guns. He was told this by the department. He was told this by CPS. He was told this by the local prosecutor. We heard that, no, you you can do these things. You can hunt. You can target practice. That's not what these people are being told on the ground level. And this has gone on for a very long time. The only way it can persist is either it's purposeful or no one's doing their job to stop it. Because it's clearly, clearly wrong. To give you the gravity of truly how wrong this is, I want to tell you a little bit more about the lawsuit, what happened there to spur this along. The child's mother abandoned the child with her boyfriend. She just disappeared. The child's boyfriend turned the child over to the grandparents. They took care of the child for a while until all of a sudden the mother shows up out of the blue a couple weeks later. She calls the state police because the parents won't give the, the grandparents won't give the child back because the mother is homeless. And at that time of the year, it's negative 30 degrees outside in the UP. The state police say if they don't give the child back to this homeless mother, that they will arrest the grandparents for kidnapping. So eventually the grandparents give the child back. Through the next couple of days, the grandmother communicates with the daughter who's living out of her Jeep in the cold, the fact that she's homeless. Out of the blue, they get a call from a foster house or foster care facility that the mother had once again abandoned her child. And so they went and they picked up the child and they started the foster care process because they wanted some rights in the matter. They wanted to take custody because they knew that their daughter was not doing a good job. Weeks later, the daughter comes back again. And the courts and the department decide that placing this child back with this mother who had since moved back in with her boyfriend, who the mother had previously had just recently called many police departments reporting the boyfriend for sexually abusing the child. They thought that was a better environment for this child than loving law abiding grandparents because the grandparents had guns in a safe. That's what this is about. And they've received hundreds of calls, according to them, over the past weeks, saying that they're not alone, that this is going on for a long time, all over the state. They went to people for help. They went to legislators. They went to the attorney general's office. The attorney general's office told them they didn't think there was anything to investigate. They went to the governor's office. The governor's office hung up on them after telling them to contact the department. They had no options left but to file a lawsuit, and the day after they filed the lawsuit is when the kid was taken from them. Can you believe that? The mother's boyfriend has sexually assaulted this child along with her drug problems, her being homeless. And the Department of Child Protective Services thought that she was a better custody person than the grandparents. I'll have more of this video right after this news break. From the Michigan Agricultural cooling in her home, which has been an extra bonus this summer. If your home has a water well, then don't wait to add a well connect to your home. Call 989-356-2113 or visit wellconnectsaves.com for more information. Rebates are available in most areas. 
The bakers of Country Hearth and Village Hearth Breads are proud to support local education with Loaves for Learning, the program that makes it easy to earn money for your school. Enjoy Country Hearth and Village Hearth all-natural breads, buns, bagels, and more. Then save the UPC from the package for your school to collect and redeem. Each is worth five cents and can be used for books, computers, sports, music, whatever your school needs, up to $10,000 a year. Learn more at loavesforlearning.com. Country Hearth and Village Hearth Breads, baking our best for you. Seems like yesterday But it was long ago Jane, it was lovely She was a queen of my night Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm Trucker Randy, playing a video clip from the Michigan Senate Judiciary Committee hearing a week ago last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, October the 17th. Speaking is President of Michigan Open Carry, Tom Lambert, giving public comments about a bill that Senator Casperson has introduced as a result of a lawsuit that's been filed by Bill Johnson, an elderly, older, kind of frail, I'd say Bill's in his 70s now, a veteran, happily married to his wife, I believe, for over 50-some years, has a daughter with a drug problem. She also has a 10-year-old boy, a son, a a grandchild to Bill and his wife. I'm emotional about this because we heard Tom Lambert say that Child Protective Services, when they made an application to become a foster care parent for this grandson, had to fill out an application or answer some questions, and it was discovered that he had guns in his home. Bill Johnson opened carries at his tea party meetings. He has a firearm on his hip out in the open for everybody to see. You don't mess with Bill because he's carrying a gun. Well, the point is is that going through this process, it looked like they were going to be denied because the Child Protective Services person told them, if you want to be granted to be a foster care parent for your grandson, you got to get rid of your guns. You heard him say that Bill Johnson contacted the Attorney General's office, Bill Schutte. And they were told by Bill Schutte's department that there was nothing they could do for them. The top law enforcement officer of the state of Michigan could not uphold and defend his Second Amendment rights to a bureaucratic department in Lansing? And was going to use this against him so that he could not take care of a a grandson that he loves and cares about who's being abandoned by his daughter who's got a drug problem. A daughter who has a boyfriend who it was testified that he's actually sexually assaulted this young man. Are you kidding me? And Governor Rick Snyder's office hung up on them. I, I, I can't believe this story. I cannot believe that this is happening in the state of Michigan. Play a little bit more of the video. The state police say if they don't give the child back to this homeless mother, that they will arrest the grandparents for kidnapping. So eventually the grandparents give the child back. Through the next couple of days, the grandmother uh, the, communicates with the daughter who's living out of her Jeep in the cold, the fact that she's homeless. Out of the blue, they get a call from a foster house or foster care facility that the mother had once again abandoned her child. And so they went and they picked up the child and they started the foster care process because they wanted some rights in the matter. They wanted to take custody because they knew that their daughter was not doing a good job. Weeks later, the daughter comes back again. And the courts in the department decide that placing this child Back with this mother who had 
since moved back in with her boyfriend, who the mother had previously had just recently called many police departments reporting the boyfriend for sexually abusing the child. They thought that was a better environment for this child than loving law abiding grandparents because the grandparents had guns in a safe. That's what this is about. And they've received hundreds of calls, according to them, over the past weeks, saying that they're not alone, that this is going on for a long time, all over the state. They went to people for help. They went to legislators. They went to the attorney general's office. The attorney general's office told them they didn't think there was anything to investigate. They went to the governor's office. The governor's office hung up on them after telling them to contact the department. They had no options left but to file a lawsuit, and the day after they filed the lawsuit is when the kid was taken from them. Please help. This is worse than it is being made out to be. It is worse than I thought it was. The truth needs to get out there so that everybody truly understands what's going on. In talking with people that have gone through this, I do believe there is probable cause to believe that criminal acts have been committed. There are certain laws in our firearms act, or in our um, certain firearm laws, that if you break them, they have criminal punishments associated with them. And I think there is probable cause to believe the department has broken these laws. This needs to be investigated, and I hope everyone in this committee will help get this investigated and get this shut down because nobody is being held accountable for this. As to the lawsuit in question, a complaint has been filed. I talked to the, the plaintiff's attorney last night. Lawsuit has been filed. The attorney general's office has filed a brief in response defending the department, which I understand is commonplace for the attorney general's office to defend a state agency. The attorney general's. Stop, 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 stop. This attorney general, Bill Schutte, has a mode of operandi that he has been utilizing in this state since he's been the attorney general time and time and time again that I want you to be aware of. He uses the excuse, Bill Schutte does, that he has to defend any elected official like Governor Rick Snyder, any bureaucratic department, with their rules, their declaratory rulings, the way they operate their departments, because he's the attorney general, and therefore he's the attorney for these bureaucratic departments. No, Bill Schutte, according to our state's constitution, you are supposed to be the top law enforcement officer to protect and defend the people of the state of Michigan, not the bureaucratic departments of the state of Michigan, i.e. the governmental agencies. You've got this wrong, sir, and you've had it wrong numerous times, and I'm sick and tired of it. You defended the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, when they came up with their absolutely insane declaratory rulings about pigs here in the state of Michigan, and you went after Mark Baker, the pig farmer in Masaki County. Your DNR threatened him that they were going to come with AR-15s and shoot his 70 pigs because of their declaratory ruling that if it had white hair, black hair, purple hair, green hair, pink hair, straight tails, curly tails, long hair, short hair, it could become a feral pig in the wild and therefore a possible threat to society because you, sir, took money from the Michigan Pork Producers Association. You defended that bureaucratic agency, took the man to court, forced him to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars that he didn't have in getting an attorney to defend himself. You got a judgment against them, a fine of $700,000, $10,000 for every pig, and threatened to come kill his pigs on his property. When he finally was prepared to put up a defense and go to court, you withdrew the lawsuit. 
And now you're going to allow another bureaucratic agency as the child protective services to treat grandparents like this because they have second amendment rights to own guns. And if they don't get rid of the guns, they can't have custody of a grandchild that's being sexually abused. What the heck is wrong with you, Bill Schuette? When are you going to stand up to these bureaucratic agencies and tell them, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. These rulings and these things that you're putting to, through to people in the state of Michigan is wrong, and I'm not going to defend you in a court of law. I don't have to defend you. As a matter of fact, I believe your rulings is unconstitutional, and you should undo your rulings. Not only not defend these people in court, but stand up for we the people. And seriously, sir, you want to be the next governor of the state of Michigan when you have neglected the people of the state of Michigan who have been wrongly treated by bureaucratic agencies in this state and you think you deserve a promotion? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I'm sorry, folks. As long as I'm alive and capable of talking into this microphone, I'm going to tell you the truth. And if Bill Schuette doesn't like it, come on this show, Bill. I'll give you an entire hour to debate me on these two cases along. Mark Baker, the pig farmer in Misaki County, and Bill Johnson up in the UP in Ontonagon. I want to talk about these two issues and these two bureaucratic agencies and how you, as the Attorney General of the State of Michigan for the last seven years, the top law enforcement officer, has allowed bureaucratic agencies to take advantage and to treat people, the citizens of the state of Michigan, this way. I want to hear your defense. I want to hear your arguments. You know what, folks? He won't come on this show. You know why? Because a former truck driver can out-debate him. Anytime, any day on those two issues, he has no defense. I don't want to hear about what the statutes say. I don't want to hear about their declaratory rulings. I don't want to hear any of it, Bill. We have a thing called the Constitution, and we have rights. Mark Baker had the right to raise pigs on his 80-acre farm. Bill Johnson, a veteran, senior citizen, has the right to own firearms. And just because they need permission from the state of Michigan to have legal rights in the care of their grandson, they're told they have to get rid of their guns. And you defended it in court. Final segment after a word from our sponsors. I'll be right back. Another important message from Drain the Swamp, Michigan. Senate Majority Leader Arlen Meekoff has booted gubernatorial candidate Senator Patrick Kolbeck off all his Senate committee assignments. This comes after Senator Kolbeck violated an unwritten rule of Michigan GOP politics to inform other elected officials when campaigning within their districts. This came after Senator Kolbeck attended a Right to Life dinner in Holland, Michigan, to which he was invited. According to a letter to Kolbeck from Meekoff's office, no reason for the action was given. It's no surprise to Drain the Swamp, Michigan, a candidate for governor other than the Attorney General, might be singled out for political punishments. It is pure Michigan politics. A principled conservative voice in Michigan must be silenced. In reality, Senator Mikoff's actions have brought the Colbeck campaign to the headlines of the media, providing publicity campaign money cannot buy. Drain the Swamp Michigan thanks Arlen Mikoff for demonstrating the political treachery practice with regularity in Lansing, a perfect example of why we need to drain the swamp. This message brought to you and paid for by Drain the Swamp Michigan. I'm Senator Patrick Kolbeck, and I'm seeking to serve you as Michigan's next governor. To earn your vote, I will lead with principled solutions, not politics as usual platitudes. For starters, I will fix Michigan's roads once and for all without a tax increase. In fact, I have a practical plan to get rid of our state income tax and the senior pension tax right along with it. I will continue my push to make Michigan the center of a free market health care revolution that will expand access to quality care for all by lowering costs. Our broad-based economic development policies will no longer pick winners and losers. Instead, we will make Michigan the number 
number one job growth state by lowering the cost of doing business for everyone with policies that also lower the cost of living for our families. I will continue my push to end Common Core and put education back into the hands of parents, teachers, and students. As your next governor, your right to bear arms will be protected, as will all of your constitutional rights. Enough with the pale pastels. It's time for the bold colors of principled solutions. To learn more, please visit ColbeckForGovernor.com. That's ColbeckForGovernor.com. I'm Patrick Colbeck, and I haven't forgot that I work for you. Paid for by Patrick Colbeck for Governor. Well, I'm sure by now y'all up here in northern Michigan have heard of Curtis Gunsmithing, the little gun shop over here off Picker Lake Road in Petoskey. Mr. Tom Curtis can fix any gun you put in front of him. The gun doctor is a certified gunsmith. You won't find one better in the north, and you sure as heck don't have to travel out of town to go see one. Get your quality gun work done right here in your town. Curtis Gunsmithing of Petoskey. Give Tom a call today at 231 838 Five five seven one. Come see the gun doctor. Truth, justice, and the American way. How could anybody Jewish support Barack Hussein Obama? He's anti-Israel. He's pro-Hamas. Common sense is very simple. In the trenches, rubber meets the road stuff. It has nothing to do with a college education or a doctorate or being a playwright or an author or a philosopher. Common sense tells you that anybody that stands against Israel is straight up on the wrong side of not only the Lord, but on the wrong side of history. It's the one and only Theron X. Weekdays, 3 p.m. to 6. Welcome back to the show, folks. I'm Trucker Randy. I apologize for being so passionate about this story, but I know Bill Johnson. He's a personal friend. When I've been up in the UP, I've attended some of his Tea Party events. I know his heart. I know his values. I know his principles. I know he cares about his grandson. I know he cares about his daughter, but she's got a drug problem. And Child Protective Services is out of control in the state of Michigan. Governor Rick Snyder hasn't done anything about it. Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly hasn't done anything about it. Attorney General Bill Schutte hasn't done anything about it. I'm getting inundated with text messages and Facebook comments right now. I can't even read them all. I'm sorry, folks. I can't. I'm getting messages from the UP. I'm getting messages from Grand Rapids. I'm getting messages from Detroit. I got a message from Flint. Uh, David, I'm sorry. I can't read it. We've got a problem in this state, folks. It's called the bureaucratic agencies that are running this state by people that are not elected. The department heads are usually appointed by the governor. But they hire whoever they want to hire, and we have no say over whether or not these people can even be fired or not. They can violate our rights and do everything they want to, and there's no consequences. We are basically living in a police state. And this has continued to be going on for the last seven years under a quote-unquote Republican governor, Rick Snyder, and Republican Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly, and a Republican Attorney General, Bill Schutte. I'm sorry, I didn't know I was going to strike a nerve with people. I didn't expect to have uh, 14 chat messages sent to me right now on Facebook. I've got seven text messages in my phone. I mean, the Child Protective Services is breaking a law. The law. A pro-gun Michigan attorney general could fix this. Shoot, he's a scumbag. I mean, that's just, I mean, I, I can't read them all. We need new leadership in this state. We need to absolutely eliminate every single person 
in the Child Protective Services Department. The heads, the employees, all of them need to be fired. I'm not talking about retraining them because maybe they're union members and we can't fire them. I'm sorry, we need a governor that says, I'll take on the union. These people that put Bill Johnson through this and said you needed to get rid of your guns in order to get custody of your grandchild need to be fired and fired immediately for violating his Second Amendment rights. And if Bill Schuette doesn't understand the Second Amendment good enough, maybe he's not good enough to be the next governor of the state of Michigan. I am so thankful. I haven't talked to Bill Johnson. I'm going to reach out to him after the show and give him my condolences and ask him about supporting him in his defense fund. I am so thankful that he's brought a lawsuit against this and it will be in the court of law heard, hopefully by a jury. And then I wonder, will Bill Schuette appeal the verdict when he loses trying to defend the department the, the Child Protective Services Department? Because any attorney worth his salt is going to be able to win this case, and Bill Schuette, you're going to lose. You're going to lose this case. Are you going to appeal it then? Are you going to try to keep this strung out in court and putting this family through this, forcing them to spend thousands of dollars in an attorney to sue the state? Or are you going to accept the verdict, the decision of the court when they find that their rights were violated and that these p evil people in Child Protective Services had no right to demand he get rid of his firearms as a condition to grant him custody of his abused grandson? What is wrong with you people? How can you possibly tolerate the citizens of the state of Michigan being treated this way. We trusted you. We campaigned for you. We got you elected. And then you turn around and do this to us. Shame on you. You do not deserve a prom promotion. You don't deserve to be in elected office right now. We have got to drain this swamp in Lansing, people. And I cannot believe that this attorney general would actually file a brief in response to try to defend what these people did to Bill Johnson and his family. If you were worth any grain of salt sir you would say absolutely not i'm not going to defend you on this case i don't agree with you i don't agree with your rulings i don't agree with your demands that the man had to get rid of his firearms in order to have custody of his abused grandson you people disgust me i'm sorry folks i just tell it like it is talk to you tomorrow This is Cassie. Thank you for listening to Your Defending Fathers. Patriot Voice.